Okay, good morning. I did a day five, but then it got deleted. So uh, I guess this is day six. Maybe I posted day five. I don't remember. Okay, so this is technically day six. Um, a lot has happened, but we'll just pick up where we are. So this has been something that's been pretty consistent throughout all of this. When uh, the Israelites were lost in the desert for 40 days for being disobedient, um, and that one just kills me too, because I think about it, like if we had just done if we had not leaned on our own understanding, if we had, if we had stopped being so prideful, like, would we be where we are now? No. But then it's just as like mind bendy as time travel or, um, you know, like at the beginning of the Bible where God tells the serpent to crawl on his belly. Well, that doesn't make any sense to us because we only know the serpent to crawl on its belly. You know, it's like, once we've made a decision, you can't go back. So once once the legs have been taken off of the snake, you can't put them back on, you know? So sometimes I wonder what things would have been, but that doesn't do any good because also then in in uh, when they talk about the Israelites wandering around in the desert, God gives them manna. He gives them what they need every day. And the people that decide that they're going to start hoarding it or try to take it on themselves, what happens to the manna? It rots. It goes moldy. And like... I even have it. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> I had it in our trailer. Give us this day our daily bread. It's when you first walk in the door here, it says, give us this day our daily bread. But do I ever? No. <laughs> I'm like dragging yesterday into it and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do for tomorrow and not caught up in the give us this day our daily bread. And one of the ladies last night, they were talking about how, you know, uh, one day at a time, right? One day at a time, one day at a time. And she said, I'm, I'm learning that you kind of have to plan ahead just a little bit. But I think that in your day, you will have be given opportunities to set up things for the next day if you're paying attention. So not that I know how to do that because I'm not great at paying attention. Anyway, I'd like to whoop whoop and give myself a pat on the back. This last week, last week, this last month, January, because today's February 1st, January, 31 days, I had one day where I only got five hours of sleep, but all the rest of them, I got six, eight, or nine hours of sleep every night. So January, get enough sleep. February is drink enough water. And because I'm such an overachiever, yesterday I had one gallon. I was just drinking down my quart and I did four quarts, which is a gallon, two cups and a pint, two pints and a quart, four quarts and a gallon. So I had my 16 cups of water yesterday and we'll try again today. And when I was going, it's, it's so funny to me because I'll get obsessed about this one thing that I'm not doing, but I won't take the steps to get there. So working on taking the steps to get there, um, had a wonderful conversation last week with a beautiful soul. Um, and I was like, Hey, is there any gentle reminders that you need? Cause I often forget about things, you know, it's like gentle reminders like, Oh yeah, you need to get enough sleep. Oh yeah. Don't eat before you go to bed. Oh yeah. And so throughout January, I've been just trying to be open to, um, opportunities and situations and to let him guide me when I talk. So, uh, yeah, it came up like four times because everybody seems to know about fight or flight or freeze and how like hard that is on the adrenals. But this should be the temporary thing. The thing that we should be in for most of the time is what? Digest and rest. We should be digesting and like just going about your day without fight or flight or freeze and it's like, who doesn't have a messed up adrenal at this point? I have a friend who's dealing with some, some real serious issues. And um, when they listed off everything that they're doing, they're working on the things that are workable, you know, like muscle stuff or this stuff or that stuff. But then when they're going through the list, blah, 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 that's wrong with them. They hit adrenals. I'm like, ah. Oh. Digestion and adrenals start there. Don't start at the other stuff. You're just, you're just putting band-aids on. You get your digestion straightened out and then it can get all of the materials to everything that it needs to because you can be putting all sorts of good stuff in your body. But if your digestive system isn't functioning properly, then it can't get to where it needs to go. And then your adrenals, without your adrenals, your whole endocrine system's pretty beat. So yeah. And I don't know how you do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways. Just find what works for you. You know, I can tell you what I do, but, um, yeah, pretty excited. We got some castor oil coming, uh, through Azure standard. So it'll be here sometime next week. The cutoff was yesterday. So it'll be here sometime next week. I am over the moon excited. The more I learn about it, the more I'm like, 
if this stuff does a tenth of what people say it does, that's amazing. And then I got involved in a group where they mix it with uh, oils and it's like, oh, but I think it's just a, a carrier oil maybe then at that point. But anyway, so uh, yeah. And then the other thing, do we have time for another thing? Yeah, so the aha moment of the month uh, was that if you're running, if you're running a hundred miles an hour, you're not, you're not, you're doing it on your own understanding because God doesn't ask us to run a hundred miles an hour because that's exhausting and nobody can maintain that. So if you're running a hundred miles an hour, what are you running from? And it's amazing to me what we're running from. And the great thing is, is that my husband, um, he has also noticed this where it's like in crisis mode, we're amazing together. And just in the day-to-day, -day, we don't really know what to do because we spent so much time apart from each other. Um, and it's not that we want to be, it's just that we know how to be, we don't know how to be. So I know I need to be an author. How do you write that out? Um, but we want to try. So we're working on it. Ooh, less than 10 minutes. That's amazing. I also want to say that. Do you know that you're a one of a kind? There is literally nobody else out there in the whole wide world that is you, that can be you, or that can do what you were made to do. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for trying. Thank you for taking the next step. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. We all need each other. Romans 12, 5. So you got one more thing? Will I keep saying that? Probably. For three years, I've been saying step five. Like, it doesn't matter where I sit. I always have to say step five. Admitted to God and to another human being the exact nature of my wrongs. But then the next one is, is like, I am ready to let go. <laughs> so I have to admit it. I admit what I'm doing. And then I have to, like, be ready to let God have it. And that, like, I love that. So even if you're not an alcoholic, even if you don't know anybody who's an alcoholic, even if you're not... If you don't know anybody who's an alcoholic, I have no idea how in this day and age, but um, the 12 steps of the Alcoholics Anonymous program is basically the breakdown of how to make a decision. You recognize you have one, you know, and then you go through all the steps. And my favorite one is the last one where it says, having had this, now that I have this, I'm going to go share it with other people. Anyway, I love you. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Make it count.